you don't know what you've got until it's gone and then when you get it back again I think Hazel for Mac I relied on this Mac app for years then Apple Silicon came along and you had to upgrade Hazel to keep using it with the new equipment stuff and I somehow chose not to there is a reason I was an Egypt a stubborn Egypt too actually since I spent months repeatedly not upgrading and now I have now Hazel is back on my Mac actually I suggest it should really be on yours as well now actually I think Apple should bundle Hazel with every Mac and I wish to reversion for the iPad and the iPhones okay hang on that's another story that's several other stories really hello I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 keys which as ever as for always is for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads uh, do subscribe because you know there's so much we can talk about here this time it's all about this app called Hazel and I say Hazel I have actually had friends ask me who is this Hazel woman that I keep mentioning because you know every so often we'll be talking about how you do something on your Mac how you get around certain things and I won't be that fussed I'll just kind of you know hopefully politely but I'll I'll shrug and say yeah Hazel does that for me Hazel is an app that sits there on your Mac all day watching any folder or folders on the Mac that you tell it to and then when something happens that you've specified it takes action on the contents of those folders best to show you uh, I could go on like this all day let me I'll try to keep this to two examples first when I spend a day writing for appinsider.com I, I have this thing I call an image drop folder it's just a folder that I've named but all screenshots I take any photographs I make any illustration make any illustration work that I'm doing at all it all goes in there and by the end of a typical day doing that I may have anywhere really between I think at least 30 maybe 70 images in that folder not one of which I will need tomorrow or in fact actually ever again I, I've made images during the day they've been published they've been used whatever's left in that image drop folder is uh, it's spent but it can also be taking up a lot of space except not anymore Hazel because I told it to keeps an eye on that image drop folder for me and when there's anything in there anything at all that is more than a day old Hazel deletes it so every morning I have a fresh empty image drop folder every day without my ever having to think about it or do it or at least not have to think or do anything after I set it up the first time after I've told Hazel to watch that folder and do this thing okay second example um I also have a Dropbox uh, folder for various things I don't not enough that I have a paid Dropbox account I've just got the the, you know, the free one we get a certain amount of space for free but um, if I need to send someone a file and Dropbox is uh, the thing they prefer the thing they know which would be just about every single time actually I have to be conscious that I've only got a certain amount of space in there fine and this and this new file I put in to send it's going to take up some of that room so this is what happens if I send you a Dropbox link to a document a file, anything else that you wanted I'll, I'll obviously send you the link and I'll tell you what it is but I will ask you to please download it in the next seven days because if you don't it will be gone now since you're you and I'm trying to tell you about Hazel I'll tell you that it, yeah you've got it it's because I have Hazel I won't get into that with anybody else I'll just tell them it's automatically gone after a week but just as I did with the image drop folder all I've done is ask Hazel to watch my Dropbox folder and instead of it being delete anything that's uh, more than one day old it I tell it to delete anything that's more than seven days old it's the same thing you see you work it out once and you apply it somewhere else um, except though actually I have folders in Dropbox that uh, I use that just for myself for whenever I'm away on someone else's machine and they are things quite old of them several years old some of them that I want available to me all the time and you know now I say that I realize I should probably move them to iCloud since that that has become where most of my documents are and since that's actually that's become the cloud service that I do pay for okay sorry I'll think about that 
later. Uh, for now, the way it works currently, what I really want is Hazel to clear out my Dropbox folder except for certain things. And that's exactly what happens. Because as well as looking for one thing, look for any file that's over seven days, I can ask Hazel to do a couple of things. I've got Hazel also checking to see whether or not a file is tagged in a certain way. Any file you like anywhere in the Mac, nothing to do with Hazel. You can select any file on the Mac, uh, right click, choose uh, one of those colors that you see there, or click on the word tags and actually type a word or a phrase like keep, or you could do that, don't delete me, anything you like. I just tend to use the uh, colors. I picked the green color because it's right there. It's speed green, good, yeah. And I'll tell Hazel, if it's more than seven days old, and if it is not tagged with green, delete it for me. Now, I could do all of this by hand. I mean, manually open the image drop folder every morning and delete everything that's in there. I mean, not only could I do that, I did do that for months. After a bit, I know it's not much, but I got a bit weary of yet another task to do every day. So I actually, I tried automating it using a keyboard maestro the tremendous keyboard maestro. I actually tried using shortcuts as well and anything else that I just happened to have on the Mac. And I did get it so that if I pressed a button on my stream deck, it would just delete everything in the image drop folder for me. And that was mildly satisfying, but it was just, you know, it was always there. So there was something else to do. And now I don't even have to press that button. Hazel does this and it keeps on doing it to the extent that I'm actually already forgetting that Hazel is there. Right for what, two weeks after I put it back on? It's just, I caved and reinstalled it and now it's there and I don't think, I don't think about what it's doing. Sorry, speaking of installing and then reinstalling, here's nothing about Hazel. If you delete some other app than Hazel from your Mac, well, Hazel will automatically find all those little related files that the app has littered across your Mac, all of them, and it will list them and it will say, Send these to the trash as well? Yes? No? Off you go. Uh, speaking of the trash, I think you're familiar with the concept of the trash or the wastebasket, depending on where you are. You drag things in there that you don't want and they sit in the trash until you decide you're certain. Let them go and you empty the trash. What neither you nor I can do is say permanently delete anything that's been in the trash for a week and which is over, just for example, which is over two gigabytes inside. Tell Hazel you want all of that and you get all of that. The trash doesn't completely empty, but the bigger files are permanently gone in exactly the way you've said. And, and also, I mean, without my thinking about it really, Hazel just gets on with that, gets on with sorting out your life and your documents and your folders, and it keeps on doing it. Sorry, it's funny I should say sorting, actually. Um, yeah, I, I've used Hazel here to delete things, but it can move them, it can rename, and it can sort them. Uh, I used to keep those Apple Insider images, uh, keep them forever in case I needed some of them again. I never did, and I finally figured that out, but over the months before I twigged, that folder got extraordinarily full, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images, but Hazel could sort it for me. Instead of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images in that one folder, I'd go into the folder and I'd get a neat little list of subfolders. All of the images from December 2021, for example, would be in a folder called Images from December 2021 that I didn't create, that Hazel did for me. I, no, hang on. No. I, there's one more really whizzy thing I want you to see, but enough of this. Let's actually use Hazel. Let's make something together right now. Actually, let's remake the one where my Dropbox files get automatically deleted after a week unless they're tagged with green, because that's a couple of things. That's looking for something, it's examining, it's got a few conditions. Uh, first, here's my Dropbox folder as it is at the moment with a whole bunch of things in it. Um, I can tell you that it's hardly anything that I really need and most of them are more than a day old, but just for to show you, let me tag a couple more with green. Click to select a file, then right click, then click on the green dot and that's done it's tagged green you can see it in the list there now here's the hazel app if you used to use hazel the way i did for so long but until the most recent version then you'll be more familiar with seeing this as part of system preferences and now it's out of that it's a separate app which makes 
some differences to speed, but the principle is the same, and actually I think it's neater organized. Click on the Add Folder icon at the top left, then choose the folder you want Hazel to look at. Um, I should say, sorry, I'm moving very quickly through my Mac here because I use default folder X to let me do that to me zip around. But it doesn't matter. However much digging back and forth you have to do through folders to find the one that, you know, to find the right one for you, well, you end up by finding it, don't you? And then you click on Open to add it to Hazel. Now, with the Dropbox folder selected in the list there, Click on this icon for create new rule. And then, uh, seriously, I mean, take some time here. Name it something memorable or you'll get so confused. Uh, also, make sure that you have that all chosen at the top there by if all of the following conditions are met. You can change that to any and it starts getting a bit messy and things, but all will do us for now. Every rule, everything that Hazel does, uh, it, it comes in two parts, really. What is it that you're looking for? And then what is it that it does when it's found that? So first we tell it we are looking for anything that's uh, in the Dropbox folder and is older than a week. I have to think about this every single time and I don't know why, but is not in the last one week is the same, isn't it? As saying everything older than a week. And actually that could be it. We've said Dropbox folder, so what we're looking for, you could just click save now on this bit and you'd kind of be done but there is that plus sign next to that rule about not in the last one week click that and you get another blank rule that can be anything you like and here's where i am going to uh, well actually um i i call them tags and i know that's the right term overall but they used to be called color labels and things and yeah hazel differentiates it calls it distinguishes color labels and tags and so what as long as you know so uh, what you want Hazel to look for is what it calls a color label and specifically the color label green. What you want to do is find anything that is not labeled or tagged green. Having found these things, more than a week old, isn't green, then there's the second section, the second part. Do the following to the matched file or folder. And what that does is do the following to the matched file or folder. I've just set this here to move to trash, but you can see there are a lot of other options. There are a lot of them. And uh, just as uh, in the, you know, what is it looking for section, there's also a plus sign here next to the what to do with it when you found it bit. So you can have very complex conditions. Uh, move a copy here, rename it to there, then delete it for some reason. But what I want is what we've already got here. So I can just click save. And if you did that, Hazel will forever look at your Dropbox folder constantly and delete anything that is older than a week and isn't tagged green, and it will do it pretty quickly too. Tell you what, here's the Dropbox folder. Uh, let me show you that again before I click Save in Hazel. And let's watch. And nothing happened. Well, nothing noticeable. Anyway, did you notice anything? I didn't notice anything. It's because there's nothing, and nothing in there is over a week old. It's over a day old. I got my times mixed up again. Uh, okay, I tell you what, just for example, let me change that to in the last one day instead of the last week. So save, watch, done. That was actually quite a lot slower than I expected. I think it was faster when Hazel was in the system preferences. Now it's a separate app. I'm not sure. About that. I mean, I'm not going to, neither of us should spend this time staring at a, a folder to see what goes. What if somebody came in and saw us staring at a folder? We don't need Hazel to be fast. We need it to be done. We need it to be constant. So that folder, well, it's emptied now. And um, another one can be autom automatically organized the way I said about the images things. Hazel just keeps doing it and doing it until you say stop. But notice what's left from this, this quick example of mine. There was more than one file that was tagged green. There's one missing. There's a tagged file, a file tagged green, and it has not survived. It has been thrown out into the trash. I didn't expect it, I admit, but that's because the file was tagged green, but it was in the folder within the folder, and the folder was not tagged green. If that sounds picky, well, like I say, certainly I really didn't think it through and expect it till I just saw it there. But with great power comes a greater requirement to be really, really careful unchecked, untested, you, you could quite easily select 
the whole wrong folder. You could have Hazel permanently delete everything on your Mac and then look at you all innocent like. I love and relish Hazel, but you do have to be careful. I mean, really careful. No, more careful than that, which is why Hazel includes a way to help. It includes a preview. Before you save that rule, click on the eye icon to preview it. Hazel will show you what that rule you've just created will find and therefore what will be deleted uh, if your rule is about deletions and things like that. You can see it there. This is what will happen to what. Um, I said I had one more WYSI example. I think it's a fantastic example of how useful Hazel is and it's a reason to write on Macs instead of PCs. Uh, but actually, I don't do this one using Hazel. You can, and I definitely would if I were setting it up now, but anyway, uh, look, Hazel watches folders, right? And you can have it act on any file that is placed in that folder. So drag a file into a folder and things can happen. I'm a freelance writer, so I invoice a lot. Frankly, I could do with invoicing an awful lot more. Yeah, um, and I, for speed, I've automated as much of the invoicing as I can. I mean, I want to get on with my writing. I don't want to be doing the business side more than I have to. At some point in the process, though, I end up saving a PDF of my latest invoice into a folder I've called Invoices. <laughs> Talent here. Hazel sees or can see that I've added something and it can act on that. Whenever any document, any description is placed in a folder you have nominated, you can have Hazel have a rule that runs a shortcut, uh, that deletes it for some reason, that renames it, that makes a copy. Um, this is a bit more complicated, but you could have it so that any uh, invoice PDF you drop into your invoices folder is automatically copied and emailed to your accountant. You could do that. As I say, I, I resisted upgrading. It was no, no offense to Hazel. I've apparently had Hazel for well over 10 years. And in that time, in that decade, I have paid for upgrades a couple of times to get, you know, various new features or others that come on. I can't even remember what they are now, but I always would. This one time upgrading was actually mandatory in order to use Hazel on the new Apple Silicon and Mac OS. Uh, mandatory for very good reasons. It was such a big change in the Mac OS, such a big rewrite for Apple Silicon and things. And the other one just physically couldn't work on the new machines. Fine. But I just bought a new machine. Yeah, I was a bit stretched there. Also, I was a little bit upgrade and subscription fatigued. Plus, it is great that you set up Hazel and then forget about it. But I had set it up and forgotten about it. Until my new Apple Silicon Mac it was not doing what it's supposed to do, what it used to do, what it ought to do, because I no longer had Hazel on it. I didn't think about it. I forgot it. For the sake of saving $20, I skipped the upgrade. Uh, that $20 is what you pay uh, moving to the newest version uh, of Hazel from any previous one. Otherwise, it's $42 to buy outright for the first time. $42, it's not a casual cup of coffee kind of amount of money, but it is peanuts next to all that Hazel can do for you, all that Hazel is doing, has been doing for a decade. I'm so pleased to have Hazel back. Um, don't take my word for it, for yourself. If you don't know it at all, go to the website, get a trial version, and you can find out all about that just by using it or by reading the official Hazel website at noodlesoft.com. Dot com. Do, do have a look. It's just tremendous. That is it for this edition of 58 Keys, though, because uh, you should go off and get Hazel. Thank you for watching, but take care of yourself, eh? Write more. And I'll see you soon.